Hello from beautiful Lolo, Montana. This is Dunrovin Ranch. We're glad to welcome you to this uh, amazing day. Hello from beautiful Lolo, Montana. This is Dunrovin Ranch. We're glad to welcome you to this uh, amazing day, really. It, we just had close to nine inches of snow, but uh, there's none left in the forecast and hopefully a little warmer temperatures to come. But uh, it's beautiful nonetheless, even though pretty early for this mountain type of snow. Um, I'm Paula. I work out here all, kind of all the time. I'm Hey Paula on the chat. And this is Annette Wagner, and she is an artist that we discovered when we had uh, held our equine art extravaganza in um, August, and uh, that was quite quite the fun time. Yep. Uh, we painted. Normally, we paint six horses and have a dinner, and uh, it's a charity event through our friends of Dunrovin. Um, uh, associated business, uh, nonprofit. Um, but because of COVID, we had to figure out a way to still have some fun, but with fewer people on, camp on, on the ranch. So we turned it into just two artists. It was Douglas Taylor and Annette and that painted horses. And instead of the contest being so much about the job they did painting the horses, um, we invited six photographers to come out and take pictures of the of the horses and and other other members of the herd and um, all over the ranch. It was really a lot of fun, and uh, that was in August. Another season <laughs> from now, <laughs> but um, today I'm here to introduce Annette. She's back to help us with a, a new project. We've got it in our minds to. Utilize these flag we these flagpoles that Suzanne bought a couple years ago. We have six of them, and we're going to use five of them in a five-week series called Fanciful Flagpoles. You say that six times fast or whatever. <laughs> but um, today, the the first installment of this um, ongoing the the plan is to have it be an ongoing uh, series with different artists coming out to contribute to this, to, to what we've started here today, is called a witness tree. And Annette and I have spent the last couple hours getting started on this, this one. As you can see, we've got a start, we've got a good start. We did. Um, the branches that, we, that you see laying out here were collected from um, mostly in the riparian area here on the ranch and at Annette's uh, property, in Stevensville, which is what? How many miles from here? Uh, we're probably 10? 10, 15. Yeah, yeah. It's so, um, I don't know. I think without further ado, uh, I'll I'll leave it to you to to help people understand the concept of the witness tree and maybe learn a little something about your background and your connection with all of that. And I will do that. There we go. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'll, so I'll stand here for a little while. <laughs> then, then, uh, yeah. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm, whoops. Your phone. And there goes my phone. Hold on one second. We're going to put something on mute so we're not. Um, I have to <laughs> get my thumb out because you can't really. Muting your phone with snow gloves on is not always the best of choices. So I am both a working artist and an intentional creativity teacher. And I do watercolors, and I do a sort of Asian style of watercolors. I do acrylic paintings. I do crazy collages. But I also do intentional creativity. And that's what the witness tree comes out of. It's, uh, we started doing these, oh goodness, probably three years ago. And we originally, the intentional, actually, let me back up a little. Intentional creativity is a movement, um, an international movement that's been going on for, oh goodness, quite some years, like 10 or 15 or 20 years even. It was founded by a woman named Shiloh Sophia. And I was in the first group of people who was certified as a teacher. And I've been working with 
Museo, which is kind of the overall brand and the Intentional Creativity Foundation for over 10 years now. I both work as an artist within that and I also work, um, I'm on faculty for the training program that we have that certifies teachers. So, and I've just worked in the background and done all kinds of things. And as an amusing point, a side point to all of this, is I am also what's called a cosmic cowgirl. <laughs> so oh, that's it's a, a little side story, but it's kind of fun given I'm out here in Montana. It, the original limited liability corporation that we kicked everything off from yeah. was called Cosmic Cowgirls Limited. And we were going to be a publishing company. And then, of course, the internet hit and everything shifted and changed. And, and it's always been this kind of like, it's in the back, the, the, the seed that started like all these other things. So hmm. it's, you know, yeah. that's a little, I should have, I would have worn my cowboy and hat, but it's not as warm. You only got snow. to Montana um, less than a year ago or? Uh, we bought property over two years ago now. Okay. Um, and finally got ourselves up here about a year ago, all the way moved. Um, so yes, my husband works in Missoula. He's a landscape photographer and a map crazy. So he does GIS and my daughter's going to the university. Perfect. But let me tell you about the witness tree. So the witness tree was originally created as a collaborative pro project to build community. The idea behind it was that we would paint a mural or paint a canvas that had a stylized tree on it. And we would start with an inquiry or a theme. We love inquiries in the intentional creativity movement. It's just like that's red thread and inquiries and things like that make us very happy. <laughs> so with the tree that we would usually do, like we did one of these at the, uh, you may have heard of the TED conferences. And we've done these at TED conferences where we would set them up in the hallway. Um, and then during breaks in the conference, people could come by and interact with us. And the way it would work was somebody would come up to the booth and we would say, what does autumn mean to you? And we would walk them through a process of sort of gently grounding themselves, closing their eyes and letting a word or two of intention come up. Um, maybe, you know, something in fall, maybe it means chilliness to you. Maybe it means something else to you. Maybe it means serenity or peace or love or whatever it may mean to you. And we would write the words on the leaves or that for them. And then the person would go over to the tree and say their intention out loud. And we would attach the leaf to the tree. Well, given this is done, Roven, we're going to do something slightly different. Uh <laughs> right. Because normally it's on a it painted onto a canvas, yes. like a fabric. So what we're going to do today is we are going to walk you through the process of coming up with your own intention. And then in the chat, you can tell us what your intention is in one or two words. And then we will take those intentions off the chat and write them on the leaves. And we have lots of different colors of leaves. Um, and then once we have them written on here with various markers, then we're going to climb back up there on ladders and we're going to attach them to them. Now we do have a little bit more work to do on the tree. We're going to add more branches and make this look a little bit more like an actual tree. And the idea is that this will stay up for five weeks. And you will, if you, if you know someone who isn't on the chat today who would really enjoy this and wants to do this, We'll be checking back in periodically and we'll be adding more leaves to the tree as you come up with things. Right. So those, like I meant, I think I said before, it's a five, five week plan for this, this art project. And um, we're hoping to find four more artists to come out in, in each of the next four weeks through. So pretty much throughout November. And we're, we're looking to have them be inspired by what's what's already happened in the week or weeks before, and to make it a progressive, um, connected project. Yeah, art installation. Yeah, art installation. <laughs> yes. So um, I think what I'll do, because at some point I will have to go back into the office because I didn't bring myself my cell phone, um, so that I can see what the chat is saying about 
how how you'd like to participate, you know, what your intentions are. But I think uh, Annette wants to spend a little more time yeah. talking. Yeah, so I want to walk folks through this process. And Paula can be my guinea pig over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wherever you happen to be at the moment, sitting down, sprawling across the couch, standing out in the beautiful, pristine, white, cold snow, <laughs> um, take a moment to just settle your body. Close your eyes and take a deep breath and just let it out slowly with whatever might be going on that doesn't need to be going on right now. And take another breath and settle out into the earth around you or underneath you. And think for a second just let the inquiry, what does autumn mean to me? Let that kind of settle in to your body. Think, just let whatever images and things want to come through, just come through for a moment or two. Feel into the inquiry a little bit. And then sometimes what I do is I'll actually put my hands over my heart as a way of kind of focusing and then I'll just say, okay, what does autumn mean to me? And I just let one or two words arise up out of me. And the words that actually come to me at the moment are brilliant colors. Because that's what autumn means to me. And then let those words come up. And when they come all the way up, speak them out loud. And then send them. To us in that chat. Yeah. You wonder if you have any words you'd like to share with us? Um, well, I actually thought about this ahead of time a little bit, <laughs> you know, and um, uh, so I, I would need a little more time to come up with new ones, but um, uh, one of the ones that came to mind um, was preparation. Mm. Um, in all kinds of ways, like raking up leaves or putting your garden to bed or like those are the things that come to mind, came to mind when I thought about fall. And to distill that into a single, single word or two um, resulted in preparation. All right. Um, so I am going to, how about I grab a yellow one? So I'm going to give you. them an example of what I should grab the, my own color, my own you choice. Grab right? one of your, grab a color for you. Well, I kind of like the green. All right. So the green is probably going to take. Yeah. So we're going to write Paula's word on here. And <laughs> all right. Oh. And we'll, I'm going to make this big so yes. everyone can. It's a long word, but you can still make it big. I don't know. I'm trying to make it as big as. And what's what's cool if you get a chance to, um, I'm sure, at some point if we haven't already, we will set up a link to Annette's website. Um, but a lot of her artwork has calligraphy or you know words incorporated into it, and um, she just has the coolest handwriting. <laughs> Thank you. So I put copper wire in these because I wanted to be able to make them look like leaves that actually. Uh -huh. So we're going to try this out. We are going to add more branches. But while well, we might as well start at the top, huh? Yeah. Or whatever. I am thinking like up here somewhere, maybe out here. Um, well, if I have any say. Uh, I'm not sure how much further I'm willing to go up. But right, right. Up That's there? a good spot right there. Okay. Let's see if we can't get this to... Yeah, take us a little while to probably get them all... Come on, wire. <laughs> I know, right? Well, this is a... We did not practice this part yet. Nope. This is all like... This is called performance art, right? We, were, we did not prepare. We, we 
All right, we have our first leaf. Yay! Oh, yay! All right. So. Well, I guess you could do yours. I'll go on in and see what uh, the chat may or may not be ready to say to us. All right. And feel free to, you know, continue. I'm going to continue putting branches on the tree. Right, or, you know, help help walk people through the getting their energy in the right in, in, in a good place and going through it. You know, we go through it again. I can certainly do that. Well, let's see. I'll go see what the chat says. We'll take and it from I there. Will... Okay, what's the highest I can reach on this side? All right, while Paula checks things on the inside, I am going to think about what else we might add on to the tree. Because we have several different kinds of branches that might work. Some of the branches come from my ranch, Coyote Rose Ranch, which is just outside of Stevensville, up on the Sunset Bench. Unfortunately, they ended up underneath a uh, snow drift. <laughs> so, they're a bit on the snowy side. Hmm. That's not going to work that way have to cut this one slightly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Perfect. I have another one I want to put up. <laughs> this one's going to be... All right. I took off one knot. That's the joys of doing this. It's working with the wood.
<laughs> but it's not easy with okay hi i think you guys can hear me now too all right so annette and i might just be seeming like we're just muttering to ourselves as we work away here <laughs> but well, that's you know no cursing just muttering yeah <laughs> that's how it goes often enough i'm trying to make it so that my wires aren't going to be in the right. way Another one. Hmm. I had a pocket. Okay. We're using zip ties to attach things to the pole. We went through a couple of different ideas and what to use, but we realized that zip ties. Right, that was actually one of the questions is how are we attaching it? Yeah, it's zip hmm. ties, and that's partially because we don't want to. I don't want to damage the poles, and also because the branches want to be left up for several weeks, I need something that's sturdy enough to deal with winds. You know, that, predicting I'm lots glad, of winds. I'm glad you said that because, in yes, we want to, you know, we want it to to survive. Any, we want it to survive, but. Um, I think part of the part of the idea too was like okay nature where you're gonna if that's where we're gonna put it or I don't think yeah see there's no way to attach that bottom it's just well, too curved how does it right how does it look I mean do we want to you know keep going from where we were I'd lower it because so we have space between the branches like oh look it kind of wants to wrap itself yeah I'm just looking at what we have though and Oh, uh, what, what the other kind of branches we have left, you mean? Yeah, and uh -huh. whether or not, but that would work. We could put it, it's still like right below this set of knobbies. Okay. Sure. wonder if I should chop it. All right, I'm going to chop it. We have a couple of them that need, oops, chopping. Of course, now I'm operating underneath a tree, which makes life amusing. All right, I'm going to borrow this from my cutting station. Yeah, should probably benefit from so we have a variety we kind of laid these out in some there, there was a method to our madness <laughs> <laughs> may not have looked like it but I'm the there was the madness right yeah <laughs> um you know some that were a little bit by size but also just by if they were mostly straight um more more curvy or some that had very, like they have very distinct angles sticking out. And if I see if we can make these little ones you brought out work. There. Wait, let me twist it. Or what do you think? Which way should this face? Uh, yeah, like that. Like work. that. And then what you're saying is do it behind. No, higher. Like uh, higher. In here? Above that second. Right, no. Are you here? Right there. Right where your finger was. Where I can do it to? Around this guy. So, yeah, maybe a little bit. Like lower. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I have to get behind. It okay, yeah, right. Doesn't right, go right up. Right here. Hold on, I have to yeah, get it. I couldn't see the other side. Perfect. Perfect. Who knew? How exciting uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it would be to find the right spot for the twist tie. Oh. With, as with any art project that you work on, there's a way in which it works right. or it doesn't work. Right. And I think having that sense of, okay, that works, is a big, it, that's what you yeah, look for. Yeah, yeah. And anybody can find that. It doesn't have to just be an artist. Right. I think a lot of times people think right. I mean, only artists can create. And that just in all, uh, I'll tell you, like, so I used to date this electrician, and he was very conscious. able to do something with the bottom where the tree branches kind of come out a little bit. Mm 
<laughs> that helps on that side. Now we need something more on that side. So, what do I have left that would help? All right, so Annette has picked out the possibly the final branches or so. Yeah. And then um, we have a few more intentions to uh, place so, on leaves. Let me move this little guy out. Call of it a day. So what I'm thinking is like this one here, uh -huh. this one somewhere on this side, and then this uh -huh. one. We'll go against there to kind of fill in because it's just got some. Okay, what small. about these that are just lying here? Those are. Oh, just... those are just the pieces I cut off. Okay, so let's I was just get them collecting the way, them maybe. so they would not. All right, it, the easiest place to make a pile, as it were. Mm. Okay, and then this guy. Whoop. Yeah, you have to. This guy will stick like right in here. So the question Do you want is. Because then that way we no, can. No, I would tie lower him. that because then. Oh. Okay. The branch is in the better spot when we lower it. Yeah. So if we can attach these guys here, maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you hold on to that one? Maybe. Here, hold this for a second. Let me get around it. Where I'm at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. There we go. Like I'll grab. This time I'm putting the pliers in my pocket. You know, if I can get this one branch to go inside of these branches, like that. I don't know who I caught on here. I'll just squish them all back against it and I'll thread this. Okay. Um, I changed my mind. Changed your mind? What does that mean? <laughs> my mind. Yeah. I changed uh, my uh, mind. I'm trying to get that back around. Oh, oh, okay. All right. And then there. Okay. But I think I think up here, like right where my hand is. Yeah, I think so too. So that means I have to go. Let me grab this one. Yeah. Oh yeah. So right under this. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Was aiming for, but it wasn't always cooperating. <laughs> and I would go under this branch. Under it? Yeah, because gravity. Oh, that's right. Darn gravity, man. <laughs> and maybe even under this, like, let me raise this and put it under that little notch. Right there? Yep. Okay. Get myself squatted. All right, this has got to go. Sorry. Needs to slide. Oh my! <laughs> oh wait! <laughs> it caught. My glove got caught. Cut, cut Paula in the zip tie. All right, I'm now a permanent part of this of the art installation. You'll never be free. <laughs> anyway, we want this up higher, yes, right? Yes, we do. But I think the way we do achieve that is by raising, physically raising these two. Like that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, I gotta stand back up to get the pliers out. Okay. I don't know if that made it any tighter. No. It's, can you? If you can go tighter, I would. All right, let me try again. Yeah. <sighs> That may be as tight as I can get it. Okay. okay. I know I'm going to have to do a bottom one. We could bring these over to the fire pit. To the what? Fire pit. Mm. 
which is near where the cart belongs anyway. And actually, I'm going to break off some of these leafy ones and put them on the bottom. Well, we have these last few intentions to put up. We have what? These last few intentions to put up. Yep. I want to put these around the bottom just to... Oh, with the leaves? Okay. Yeah, just to give it... Sure. Our tree has things that have fallen, like any other tree. As our creative creativity curator, is that Yep. the title... Annette is going to be working with us throughout the future, into the future, with uh, God knows what. Things that we come up with ourselves, things that uh, you guys can let us know might sound of interest to you. Things with an artistic we have a couple flair. More. Yeah. But let your imagination fly like... Who would have, who would have thought that you could take a flagpole and turn it into a tree? <laughs> who would have thunk it? So, looking forward to coming up with all kinds of great ideas. Boy, I sort of don't want to break this guy. That one from our ranch. Yeah, he's got just some nice. I think I know, the little it does sister have a nice tree. Shape to it. The little sister tree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. Stick it here. I do like that. Oh, uh, my husband contributed all the crazy zip ties from his massive collection of zip ties. All right. I didn't need these. This is mine. Leave those out. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, actually, let's put some more intentions on, and then I'll clean up. Yeah. Some more. Okay. Okay. Not a yellow leaf. All right. So, a um, couple more intentions. The thank you, thank you, thank you to our chatters. Um, Gabby had two different feelings. You ready? Yes. Okay. The first one, it's three words, actually. It's bright gorgeous colors which really right guys we had such an amazing fall in this valley the cameras were able to pan to to other parts of the of of the area and it was really just every every fall color full 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 bloom yep it was. If you could speak of fall as blooming. And uh, really, I really appreciated it. You know, really so soaked it in. Because I knew what was coming. I didn't think it was coming this soon, but I knew it was coming. So bright, gorgeous colors. That's a really great... Okay. Great and then one. we'll do one of the... I have a few of these little pie tin leaves. <laughs> oh, nice. So you want to write the second one from yeah. from from Gabby? Yeah. Her second one comes into the now a little more. It's crisp air. Yes. Ooh, I like that on the silver ones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so not only did Annette devise and build these fabric leaves, but I think the idea might have started with Suzanne to use pie tins. I don't remember if you or Suzanne. Yeah, you all came cheap up pie with. tins, uh, and cut them up into the shape, and so just something sparkly and maybe a little noisy. And yep, they'll be a little noisier in the wind. That's I'm okay. Thinking. What is this one? 
Uh -huh. Well, should I get the ladder back for you? Here, we're going to... I got it. You got it? Okay. So uh, we'll keep the ladders handy. And the, the, the plan is that um, each week, each Monday, uh, we'll revisit the basic concept and we'll be prepared to continue to add leaves. As the trees lose the leaves, this tree will gain leaves. And uh, with, with your intentions. I want to put this one right here in front. Okay. Whoa. All right. So let's do two more. Okay. Okay. This one is from Twinks. Hi, Twinks. And it's also three words. And um, her full sentence was autumn, I th if I'm, I might be paraphrasing a little bit, autumn leaves me with a feeling of quiet desperation. So I thought we would just do quiet desperation. All right, that works. But it does help to hear the full context, I think, of the thought. Thank you. Oh, you know what? We haven't done one of these. Or the brown. Oh, the little one? Yeah. I could do one of the red ones. I Whatever could get you want. black out. I don't have as many of those, but they're just, I was worried they were too small. Too small. We could do, that's okay. We, let's do one. Maybe uh -huh. because they're so bright, they'll still be okay, you know? Yeah. All right. What's the next? Okay, one? this last one, I think it's kind of fitting that we end on this one. It's uh, also from Celia, but it's, it's kind of my idea on her, but it, it's, a, it's a staple of the chat. And the, it's when Celia types in, hee, 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 right? <laughs> so I think sometimes fall makes you feel that way, a little, little silly. And we're... I don't know. That's both me and Celia collaborating to create a, a thought. <laughs> All right. And that'll do her. Okay. And I will find a couple spots. Should I put the silliness all the way out at the end? <laughs> you should. This one has to wrap a little bit of the red around it okay. to attack. But. How about like right here? Ooh. Different level, different... Yeah. Flat, different different level. Uh, plane. Let me get this guy to wrap around. All right. Okay. Well, is there is there any kind of way that you end? Uh, you know, I think the words that I would probably choose to end this is um, so the witness tree comes to you in a sense of collaboration, and it comes. And the reason I chose it, one of the main reasons, was because of all of you, because there is this community here, and everyone interacts with each other. So I want you to think of this as your tree that represents the thoughts of your community. Um, in, the re in the intentional creativity community, we many times use a ball of red thread that we pass around in a circle and we all end up with a piece of it and we'll speak our intentions. And in some ways, you're leaving your intentions here, but what I wanna leave you with is the thought that we are all connected, we are all community, and I want to leave you with this thought of the red thread is connecting all of us, even if you're online and somewhere else in the world. So thank you for participating and being part of the tree. We'll see you again next week with more 
creativity. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you.